He made headlines last year when he was rumored to run for Tim Scott's old house seat. And in this edition of Quintus Close-Ups, Charleston County Council Vice Chairman Elliot Summy tells me why he passed on the opportunity. You know, it was with the week before Christmas, and I was interviewing your great friend Paul Thurman. Sure. And you made a surprise appearance. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> and I haven't seen you since then. Well, Paul's a good friend of mine. Yes. And uh, we go way back, and we served on council together um, back in 2008 and 2009. And uh, he, unfortunately for me, left council. He was one of my closest friends on county council. Okay. Um, you know, at that time I was an elected Democrat, he's elected Republican. Okay. But uh, he and I saw eye to eye on a lot of things, and we oh. were able to work together um, to get a lot of stuff accomplished with county council. And um, matter of fact, I was a swing vote that got him elected as vice chairman of my first my first vote on council. Wow. And uh, and I caught a lot of grief from the Democratic Party <laughs> on that, but it turned out to be one of the smartest things I ever did because. Uh, Paul, uh, Paul has got a unique ability to see things from both sides, and he's a very intelligent guy. Uh, not only is he a good lawyer, but he's a good man, and uh, he's he's going to be a great South Carolina senator for us. I'm, I worked real hard for his campaign, helping him, and he's a, he's a great guy. And he really is. Yeah, we're good friends. Yes, indeed. And on Monday, Jenny Sanford announced that she wouldn't run for Tim Scott's uh, house seat, and I know you announced earlier this month that you wouldn't either. Tell me, what got that conclusion? Um, to be honest with you, um, I was really, um, really looking forward to running. Um, I'd gotten a lot of support from a lot of folks who called me and, 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 and a lot of people that I'd called and said, hey, we'll support you, we'll help you raise money, we'll, we'll get behind you. Sure. And it really felt right. But um, my youngest son, uh, right before Christmas, um, he's 10 months old, 11 months old now, he's, uh, he developed some, uh, some uh, breathing issue. Um, he's doing a lot better now, but at the time, um, the medical university really didn't know what was wrong. Uh, we had him in the children's hospital, and his oxygen levels were bad, and, and we got to run some more tests in February. And I just felt like I have to give 100% of myself and anything and everything sure. I do um, with trying to run a congressional race and with one of my children not being right. I didn't feel like um, I could put 100% of myself into either one of those things, and the number one priority was Harrison. So. I have to put 100% into being a father, yes, and, that, and that and that comes uh, my, as my number one priority. So uh, that's why I decided not to run. Um, I'm going to stay involved in that race. I'm going to keep watching, okay. just like Paul. Yes, yes. Uh, we're going to be looking over everybody's shoulder. I'm going to be picking a horse in that race um, to get behind, um, and because we need some good positive changes in Washington, we need some more common sense in government, and uh, that's what I, you know, I'd like to see out of Washington. Is what I hopefully the citizens see in Charleston County, which is. A government that runs itself like a business. And speaking of Charleston County, you just were, were re-elected as the vice chairman. Tell me, how is that going? Great, great. I, you know, I, I've enjoyed the leadership of Chairman Pryor, oh, yes. uh, and I, again, go way back to when I was a child. Uh, my grandfather used to uh, send his radiator work to Pryor's radio, really? radiator uh, back in the Crosby's Garage days. Yes, yes. And yes. he used to uh, he used to get cars fixed uh, at Crosby's Garage. So, uh, Mr. Sam. Teddy's dad and my grandfather Miner go back to the 60s and 70s yes. and of course my father and Teddy go way back in that same regard and so I've been able to inherit that relationship and Teddy and I, uh, matter of fact I was on the phone with Teddy when I walked up, he he and I, um, we like rolling up our sleeves and getting things done, sure. we're just two good old North Charleston boys trying to make good for the county and and uh, it's nice a Republican and a Democrat can work together to get things done. I mean, yes. Teddy's a Teddy's a great guy, and uh, he's a loyal friend. He really is. I'm hoping to interview him soon. I'm sure you. will I'll make that happen. Thank you. I really I, appreciate we'll get that. on it. We'll make that happen. Okay. And you know, besides your love for politics, I understand that you are the senior vice president of Weber USA. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Tell me how's that going? That's great. We're um, we're a development company. Um, I've been in the real estate development business uh, about six seven years now, and. And uh, we own uh, 1,800 acres in North Charleston up on I-26. Right. Um, and my task and my and my job is to help plan a uh, master plan a sustainable uh, development up there. Um, yeah. I really feel that our property is situated where it's situated between North Charleston and Somerville. Yeah. It's going to give um, that area of, of the of the county a a opportunity to grow for the next 30 years. Um, if there's industrial land, commercial land, retail, and a little bit of housing. Um, but it's our hope through some smartly planned infrastructure that we create a situation where people not only live but work and can play all in the same area, and uh, which will help reduce some of the traffic issues on the 26. Yes, indeed. And where did the love of real estate come from? 
You know, it, it's it's uh, funny. I was in the uh, construction business uh, when I first started out. I was a site in the site construction business. I owned dump trucks and uh, track hoes and did site work, and um, really felt a knack for wanting to do and build really interesting places for people. Sure. Uh, the other pro side of it, I think, is in government. Um, being around my father uh, as long as I have, and watching North Charleston change and how this, how municipalities and county governments can can truly affect the way things feel. Sure, sure. Um, I really feel like I, I have a knack for doing that, um, helping create places, not just things. Sure. And, uh, and and because people enjoy places just like this, and yes. this is a place. This, it, it feels good to be here. It's not just you know somewhere just government money thrown at something. It's actually something that feels good that people are attracted to. Sure. And um, and I feel like in real estate we can, you know, I can help affect that. Mm -hmm. that. Yes. You know, a lot of people know you as an entrepreneur and a politician, but at the end of the day, who is Elliot Summit? I'm a father. I'm a dad. My greatest joy are my children. Uh, my two sons, Jackson and Harrison. Yeah. Um, that's my greatest joy um, in, in trying to make this world a little bit better for them. Yes. Um, my grandfather and my father did that for me. Um, you know, they, my grandfather created opportunities for my father and, and for my mother and his family. And he, my, my father's done that for me. And it's my job as a, as, a, as a human being to try to make the most of the opportunities that my father has created for me and the relationships he's created for me. Yeah, but capitalize on those and make better opportunities for my sons. Um, and in the process, hopefully I'll make opportunities for everyone else too. And that's what it's about. It's just about giving back um, what, I've, what I've received, uh, not only for my children, but for everybody else too. Yes, and let's walk back down memory lane. I know North Charleston's home for you. When you think of the city, what comes to mind? You know, this, being from North Charleston, you're a little different. Um, you know, we've always kind of had a chip on our shoulders when it comes to the city of Charleston. Uh, we're kind of been the, you know, I, I, I kid Joe Qualey from James Island and say, you know, y'all find it cool not to, not to like the city. North Charleston invented it. And But, you know, what I think is now is is a proud people. Yes. Um, people from North Charleston are proud to be from North Charleston. Oh, yes. Um, it always hasn't, it not always has been that way. Okay. Um, we've always been proud of ourselves, but the rest of the region, um, for, for a long time kind of looked at us as just a place to work. Okay. Um, that was high in crime and high in industry. It's not that way anymore. The region and the state now looks at us differently. Yes. Um, we've all, we've kind of grown up a little bit. We're not the, uh, the rebellious teenagers that we once were. We're, <laughs> we're a mature city yes. that, uh, that enjoys, um, great places to um, shop and eat and live and, and work. Yes. Um, Park Circle has had a renaissance and, and that means a lot to me because I was born and raised in Park Circle. I went to North Charleston High School That's and, right. and being able to walk down Montague and see the great places like Evo and the Majorua oh, yeah. and, and the park, uh, Dig in the Park and, and Cork and those sort of places where not only is it folks I know, but there's a lot of folks there I don't know. That means people from Mount Pleasant and West Ashley and Somerville converging. Are, are converging in North Charleston to, to have a good time. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's, a great, it's great for a hometown boy to, to see that. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's nice that people are, are recognizing that we're a nice place to be. And in 1995, you graduated from North Charleston High School. Yeah. Who was Elliot Summy as a high school student? Um, I was kind of a, a quiet little nerd, to be honest with you. I'm not going to kid you. Okay. I, you know, I, um, I, I did well in school, um, but, I, you know, I was um, I was kind of quiet. Um, played some sports, um, played baseball, oh, yeah. um, and I, but, you know, it was, um, that education in North Charleston High School was the best thing that could ever happen to me. Um, it was predominantly African American school, okay. predominantly um, socioeconomically very poor. Okay. Um, it taught. Not only did I learn great things in the classroom, and I did. I had some good teachers there, and a good principal, Tommy Mullins, who was a principal there. But um, it was a social education. Okay. It taught me how to get along with all kinds of people, and I've used that. I used more of what I learned in high school as far as relationships or, or far as relationships go yeah. than I than I've learned from just about anything else. It's about understanding that everyone's problem might not be the biggest problem to me, but sure. it's in their world it's the biggest problem to them. And understanding that the world takes a whole different all kinds of different people to make the world go around.
And from North Charleston High School, you went to the College of Charleston. The College of Charleston. And you major in history. No, I was history major. Why was the College of Charleston so attractive to you? Well, um, to be honest, um, my father had just become mayor in, in October 94, so my senior year in high school. Um, you know, he'd gone from working every day, towing cars and painting cars for a living, like my grandfather. Yeah. Um, we weren't, we didn't have a lot of money. Um, I was up for a scholarship at the Citadel, okay. um, but it was still going to be expensive to go there. Um, we weren't, at, as a family unit, weren't at a, at a place where I could afford to go away from school. Okay. Um, but the College of Charleston um, offered me a great education. I love history. My love for history um, comes from a, a mentor of mine, Henry Garvey, who was oh, served yeah. on council. That's my high school teacher? Yeah, he was my seventh grade U.S. history teacher. Really? Yeah, uh, he taught me U.S. history at Morningside Middle. He taught me social, so, social studies at Burke. There you go. Yes. Uh, Henry, uh, Henry had a great influence on me. Um, he's where I first learned to love history. Mm -hmm. And that love for history has continued on even to today. Uh, one of the reasons why I was history major in college was because of Henry. And oh, cool. um, the College of Charleston had a, has has and had then a very great accredited history department, one of the only hi accredited history departments at that time in South Carolina. Um, and Judge Sanders, um, who I had a lot of admiration for and still do, um, was the president back then and um, went down and talked to the judge and filled out an application and yeah. got into college. And right. I, I enjoyed my college years. Um, you know, I, I, stay, I lived at home. Um, my father and my mother struggled and helped pay my tuition. I paid for the books, and I worked full-time down at a law firm in the city of Charleston, yeah. young Clement Rivers, way That's back right. then. And um, I enjoyed that time. Um, I, if I could do it all over again and wave a magic wand, I would have loved to go away to school and, and have that whole different college experience. Yeah, but, yeah. you know, every no matter where you go um, and everywhere you look, the College of Charleston is very unique because of its campus being in, this, in, it with, in the boundaries of downtown Charleston. Um, it has the opportunity to, for students to feel and touch history and culture sure. like you can't get in the classroom. That's so um, it was a great experience, and I loved my years of college. Let's talk about family. Your first son, Jackson. Yes. Describe Jackson for those who don't know him. Jackson is uh, Jackson is a is a fun little kid. He's uh, he's three years old. Just turned three in in uh, December. Okay. Uh, he's. Uh, He's a beautiful blonde-haired kid, okay. like his mama. Uh, thank Lord, thank the Lord for Allison. She, yes. she's. Uh, I told her this morning, as a matter of fact, I said, "Baby, you sure do have two beautiful children." And I'm glad because they look just like her. Uh, especially Harrison really looks like her. But Jackson's tall and slender and blonde hair and just a great personality, and um, doesn't meet a stranger. Um, and he's sensitive and sweet, and uh, he's super smart. He, it's fun watching Jackson at, at this age at three because yes. everything in the world is a sponge. He's such a sponge and everything that's coming in yeah. is just new to him and it's fun to watch the newness. Um, you know, if, whether I'm taking him to his first ball game or his first Carolina game yeah. like we did back in August or um, taking him to Disney World for the first time yeah. like we did in, uh, after Thanksgiving, yeah. it's all, it's all wide-eyed and it's mm -hmm. fun to watch that uh, go on. It's, it's really fun. And Harrison. Oh, Harrison's Harrison's our little tank. He's he's built like Dad. Yes. He's short and he's stocky, <laughs> and he's even got bow. He's a little bow-legged little thing, just really? like my father. Yes, oh, but yeah. he but he looks like Allison. Thank the Lord. And uh, he's beautiful, and he smiles constantly. Um, even when we were in the hospital, it was yeah. amazing. The nurses were amazing. He's sick. He doesn't feel good. He's still smiling. Yeah. And uh, that I attribute a lot to my father. My father has this uh, infectious smile. And uh, Harrison has it too, and it's and I'm glad because it's um he's got he's got a lot of my father's personality in him. And where you know Harrison's one of these children where I laugh and say you know he doesn't care if the sun comes up in the morning. <laughs> he's gonna smile and he's gonna have to be okay, and he's just a fun-loving little child. And uh, I'm very blessed. I'm very blessed with two healthy, beautiful children. Yes, and let's talk about the love of your life, Allison. Allison, now uh, Allison's. Uh, Allison keeps me straight. She's, okay. um, Allison and I have been together 14 years. Wow. Um, we grew up together in the same neighborhood. Her brother and I were best friends growing up, oh, Michael. Cool. And, um, and we grew all, all of us grew up in Park Circle. And uh, I, have, I have loved Allison since I was a kid. Uh, I'm, I'm fortunate to um, have had one real love in my life, and, and it's her. And um, she... 
she keeps me grounded, sure. she, which is something I need. Um, and she is a wonderful mother who um, takes wonderful care of our sons. And she's um, she's beautiful and, 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 and just, she's just great. And it's hard to describe it. Yes, I almost yeah. get choked up a little bit talking about her. But she's, she's, a, she's a good person. And um, she's a far better person than I am, and and she sees things from a better perspective okay. um, uh, than I do. She sees things differently, um, and it really works for me because she can um, help me see a side of things that I wouldn't normally see. And it, she reminds me on a constant basis, whether she says it or not, to um, look at things from all sides. Yes. She's uh, she's. She's a smart, smart lady and a, and a wonderful partner and mother. Describe to me the following in one word. Golf. <laughs> um, frustrating. I bet. <laughs> frustrating. I, um, I've played a lot of golf. I used to play a lot of golf. Now that I'm a dad, I don't get to play as much sure. as I used to. But um, I've, I, I enjoy it. Um, it's, it's, it's almost like, to me, it's, it's similar to hunting. Uh, it's a way to get out into nature and to um, relax and, and enjoy the environment around you. Yeah, boating. Uh, my love. I love boating. I love. Um, we're so lucky to be in the location. Yes. Yes. We have very unique rivers um, and bodies of water here, whether it's the intercoastal, the Wando, the Cooper, the Ashley, or our wonderful lakes, which we spend a lot of time at the lake. Yeah. We've got a place in Bono. Oh, good. Uh, I'm a, I kid people all the time. I'm a Berkeley County resident on the weekends. <laughs> Uh, I love Bono. I love the people of Bono. I enjoy Bono Beach. I, um, it's a very, again, another South Carolina uniqueness. Yes. And uh, but we're very fortunate to live in the Low Country in yes. because the environment, to me, um, has shaped our history sure. and it shapes who we are as a people. Um, we we all act a little differently from the Low Country. We eat differently because oh, yeah. we're from the Low Country, yeah. and it all has to do with our environment and our and a lot of the rice culture that we came from. Yes, true. One word to describe Elliot Sunny. Oh God, oh, that's hard. I don't, oh. I, I don't, I don't know. Um, I try to care. Yes, seems that way. I, I care. I care about my family, and I care about our community. Um, I know I don't always make the right decisions, um, and I hope that the people are patient with me. I'm learning as much as um, I've gotten a great education in politics from my father and my grandfather. Yeah. Um, I'm still learning every day, and. Um, Ultimately, my number one goal, whether it's county council or anything else I ever may do, is yeah. is to let people know I care about them and that I care about this community. And speaking of your future, when you look into it, what do you see? No, I don't know. I, um, if you'd asked me that in early December, I'd have said the first congressional district. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But um, you know, my ultimate uh, as a child, I grew up around Glenn McConnell. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and the senator and uh, Sam both are very. Um, important to me and Allison and my family, um, Sam and Glenn. Uh, Glenn has been a mentor of mine, and um, it has been my. It's always been my dream it, it, to go to the South Carolina Senate and uh, serve with Glenn um, and learn from him. He, to me, is a master politician. Um, he is uh, someone who understands the rules of the yeah. game, and he and he understands. Uh, he has a great love for the history of politics in this state, just as I do. And um, and to me, serving with him would be the greatest honor I could ever I could ever have in politics personally. Um, and and hopefully, um, maybe one of those opportunities will afford uh, before he retires. Um, you know, now that he's a lieutenant, the lieutenant governor, I, I don't know if he's going to run for lieutenant governor again. But he still presides over the Senate. Yes. So if there was a possible way that I could somehow get to the Senate and and serve with Glenn, uh, that would be that would be my my goal for now but right now um, I enjoy County Council I think we're making a difference um, we've uh, reduced our budget but at the same time given more service sure, sure. that's important yeah. um, what we've done in the recycling program has been big and uh, the decisions we've made with infrastructure and the asset sales tax and green space oh, yeah. and, uh, and 526 uh, I think that uh, Watching government be made is sort of like watching sausage get made. It's not pretty all the time, but no. <laughs> hopefully the results still taste just as good. Yes. yes. So I, right now, hopefully we're, uh, hopefully I'm doing a good job. I, I I think I am. People tell me I am, but I, you know you never know. 
um, how many people really come up and tell you you're not. Right, right. So, right. Um, you know, I, I hope I'm doing a good job. It feels right. Yes. Um, and I and I want to make my goal right now is to make county government as efficient and as good as it can be to create as much service as we can for folks at the least amount of money that we can spend. Sure. Well, Mr. Cool, it was so good talking to you. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank I you. enjoyed it. And anytime. You too.